and welcome to another episode of Community Designs. My name's Katrina Komenos and today we're about 40 minutes outside of the Sydney CBD in the Sutherland Shire Council at a beautiful and wonderful place called the Hazelhurst Regional Gallery and Arts Centre. Today we're going to be talking to some experts about the beautiful history about this place, some wonderful exhibitions that are going on, as well as some great activities that are happening down here. So come along with me, let's go check it out. Welcome back. I'm joined today with Carrie Kibler, who is the curator at the Hazelhurst Gallery. Carrie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Katrina. Okay, so I was just wondering, um, could you talk a little bit about the Dream Machine exhibition that's going on at the moment? The Dream Machines exhibition brings together five artists who are simultaneously scientist, inventor and engineer. I'm just trying to think about the name Dream Machine. Where does that actually come from and how did you think of that as a title? As engineers, we often work with artists and architects and they are the ones that dream up the ideas and those of us that are the engineers, we are the ones that make it happen. The beautiful thing is when you find the person that is both artist and engineer and they can take the amazing or crazy idea and turn it into reality. And I guess as a curator, you definitely have the difficult job of picking and choosing what kind of exhibits go where and how they relate to one another. I was wondering, how do you choose a piece to present and what kind of makes that piece special? So for this exhibition, I was really interested in artists that were developing work that was really engaging, it was really creative, it was really exciting. And for these works, they're often taking uh, utilitarian or everyday objects and hacking and repurposing them. And what I hope that audiences will take away from the exhibition is that they might go home and look at things that they have lying around the house or in the backyard or in their garage and think to themselves, well, what can I do with this? What, what can I make it? How can it be something else? Or, or perhaps what happens if I pull it apart? What else can this be and what can it do? So I guess because all of these installations have so many delicate moving parts and they're all basically representing motion, um, were there any kind of challenges setting this kind of thing up? <laughs> I'm sure there would have been. Uh, yeah. there, was, there was a lot of challenges. Uh, so for the exhibition installation period, we had all of the artists travelling from across Australia to be here wow. for the project. And all of the artists were commissioned to make the works specifically for the exhibition as well. So the first time that four out of the five of these works had been exhibited was here at Hazelhurst. I guess one of the other challenges is with an eight-week exhibition, it's keeping the work going for the whole eight-week exhibition. And so there was a lot of repairs and rebuilding, uh, a lot of calls to artists and FaceTiming, particularly if they're interstate. And, uh, and just keeping everything, everything working and everything moving. So I noticed one of your um, larger exhibits here had a bunch of robots circulating one another. Um, can you tell me a bit about that one in particular? So that work is Robot Operator by Wade Marinowski. It's a series of um, custom designed and hand built completely autonomous robots. Uh, the, the robots have a Microsoft Connect sensor on the front of them and when the audience or the gallery visitors walk into the space, the robots will sense people in the space and then they will respond to them in some way with lights, with voices and with movement as well. What kind of feeling did you want the audience member to evoke when they actually step into that kind of space? So for Wade's installation, we've actually enclosed it in a separate room. So it's, um, it's quite a, a darkened space if you're walking into it through a curtain. And we want audiences to be surprised. Um, when they first walk into the space, the robots will be motionless, they'll be quite still. And then as the audience starts moving through the space, they'll realise that the robots will begin to, to talk and they'll begin to move and they'll begin to follow the audience's um, motion as they're walking through the space. So the audience becomes very much a participant in the work. So do you have a particular interest in technology to sort of set this kind of thing up? Because I noticed that all of these are very innovative and very, you know, humans working with robots type of thing. Mm -hmm. So how did you come about pulling all of this together as, as a curator? 
Um, so aside from a background in art theory and curatorial, I also have a background in science as well. So um, I spent several years studying nuclear medicine technology and so I have an interest in artists that are working with scientific principles or artists that are often collaborating with scientists or in this exhibition it's the artist as scientist. Wow, yeah that's amazing. So let's talk a little bit about this piece behind us. Um, I noticed that it's attached to a bicycle, there are a bunch of brushes and they circulate the artwork. Um, what was the concept behind this particular one? So this work is by uh, painter James Dodd and it's an extension of his painting practice. The work is called Painting Mill version 3.5 and it's an ongoing project that he's been working on for about two years. And so basically it's, it's him taking things that he has lying around in his shed at home, hacking and repurposing them and turning it into something completely new and creative. Um, so he's taken a bicycle. Um, he has a background of working with bicycles. He's also um, worked as a bicycle mechanic for a number of years. And so it takes a bicycle, uh, a, a rollerblade, a skateboard wheel, and a series of cordless drills, as well as other objects and items, hardware items that you could pick up at your local hardware store or electronics store. And it's operated by remote control, and it's a remote control for an aeroplane. And so then when you're activating the remote control, it's interfacing with the cordless drills. And so the cordless drill on the back wheel of the bike enables you to move the bike forwards and backwards. Um, the cordless drill that's on the raised platform enables you to move the brushes either closer to you or further away from you. And then the cordless drill with the brush attachments, you can rotate it clockwise, anti-clockwise, slow it up or speed it down, and you can also move it closer to what you're working on, so whether it's board or canvas or in the case for the demonstrations we've been using cardboard. And to the right of us we also have three miniature sets um, and they all have kind of like a like a domestic theme to them. Uh, what's the idea behind those? So that work is This Isn't Happening and it's by artists David Lowry and Jackie Middleton. It's a series of automatons and the artists have taken vintage gramophone motors and then they've created a, a diorama or a model and then the model is activated when you crank the vintage gramophone motor it then activates a series of pulleys and cogs and axles underneath the model and it powers the, the model um, at the top. So it has a, a, very, uh, a very domestic feel about it. So there's three separate scenes. There's uh, a female figure in each. In the first uh, she's in the kitchen and she's rummaging through a bin. In the second, she's in the lounge room and she's cleaning a, a spot of endlessly off, off, the, off the carpet. And in the third, she's in bed and very slowly tossing and turning in bed. Mm. The, the work has an almost nightmarish like quality, which is a, a really beautiful play on this idea of a dream machine. Uh, the figure is endlessly repeating the movement over and over again, either rummaging through the bin, cleaning the floor, or tossing and turning in bed. Yeah, you can definitely tell that it's quite monotonous each time the figure moves and it's almost like we're perpetuating that because we turn the gear. So it is quite interesting that. So we'll just talk about the other two exhibitions you have going on here as well. There's one that has a coil that's attached to a pen. Mm -hmm. What's the idea behind that particular piece? So that work is Shadow Phase by Melbourne-based artist Cameron Robbins. It's a solar-powered and time-based drawing instrument. There's a solar panel on the gallery deck and then that's connected to a drawing arm and a motor in the gallery by a series of cables. And the solar panel powers the motor and the drawing arm, so it slows up or speeds down or stops entirely, depending on how much sun is on the solar panel at any one time. And then the drawing arm draws um, with a beautiful ink pen, these beautiful marks on paper, which is on a mechanical roller powered by standard electricity or coal-fired electricity and that paper's on a roller that rotates once every 120 hours, so once every four days. So over the course of the exhibition, the machine has created a series of drawings that's interpreting the way the sun is interacting with the site here at Hazelhurst. And the last piece, which is towards the back of us, mm -hmm. Um, that one looks almost 3D printed, it's got LED lights on it, it's more of a sculpture based uh, item. Can we talk a little bit about that one too? Yeah. So that work is Terahertz Transceiver by Tasmanian based artist Tricky Walsh. It's a theoretical machine, it looks like it works and you think it works, but when you take a closer look you'll realise that it's actually hand carved balsa and basswood. Uh, it also has electrics involved as well through uh, fibre optic cables um, and coloured lights.
So terahertz transceiver is a theoretical machine and the artist is theorising that it uses terahertz radiation as a form of communication. So terahertz radiation sits somewhere in between microwaves and infrared rays. Until the 1980s it was known as the terahertz gap as it was undetectable. In recent years terahertz radiation has been used for things like uh, imaging of paintings, it's also being used um, in dentistry and for scanning as well. And terahertz radiation is interesting is in that unlike x-rays it's non-ionizing so it's not affecting the object that it's um, imaging. Uh, the work itself is based on early x-ray machines and something called the Studley tool chest which was designed by a piano tuner. And so if you're watching the animation for the work you can see how it completely closes up and then it opens back out again. And do you have any plans for the gallery in the near future? What kind of things would you like to see happen here? So our next exhibition is European Old Masters from the 16th to 19th century and their works from the Art Gallery of New South Wales. And um, how can people find out more about this? To find out more about Hazelhurst, you can go onto our website, which is www.hazelhurst.com.au. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Carrie. Thanks, Katrina. I'm here outside of the Hazelhurst Gallery and I'm joined by Belinda Hanrahan, who is the director of the Hazelhurst Gallery. Belinda, thank you for your time today. Pleasure. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the history of this place? I've noticed that there's a lot of interesting architecture and everything is quite preserved. Can you tell us a bit yeah. about that? It's, it's got a fascinating history actually because it was originally the property of a couple called Ben and Hazel Broadhurst who were very community minded and they built this fabulous home after the war, um, which is very much the story of the Sutherland Shire is post-war, where people, you know, got their quarter acre block and built their first house. But what they did, they had a really extensive property and um, he commissioned an architect to build this beautiful house and he decided to call the property after his wife Hazel. So hence Hazelhurst is an amalgam of Hazel Broadhurst, which is a really lovely tribute. So she got to design the house and it's one of the few historic houses in the Sutherland Shire that really shows that beautiful Art Deco inspired um, architecture. So they, lived here for, for decades and were very involved in the community and what they decided very generously was to bequeath the property when they passed away to the people of the Sutherland Shire. So it's got at its heart a community story and a community commitment. So once it was gifted to the people um, of the Sutherland Shire, then the big decision was what do we do with this amazing grounds um, that they'd saved because after the war where they were trying to use up a lot of the land, the Housing Commission were trying to take it to build properties. So they decided to turn it into a farm and gardens so that it couldn't be taken. So it's a rare piece of 1.3 hectares of gardens. So we sort of call it a bit of an oasis. Um, but the, after the was bequeathed, the people, um, the arts community really said, we've got enough sporting fields, we've got enough other spaces. Can we really have an arts facility? Um, there's a great appetite. There's some really important leading artists in the area of the Sutherland Shire and beyond. So it was a very wise decision and the council um, went right around Australia, looked at the best regional art centres that they could see and, and if you like, created this amazing blueprint of Hazelhurst Regional Gallery and Art Centre, um, which I think stands now as one of the most significant um, uh, regional arts complexes in, a, in the country, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's incredible, isn't yeah. it? Gee. And do you happen to know this, this mural that we're standing behind, um, is this, does this have something to do with Bill and Hazel yeah, as well? Yeah, um, Ben and Hazel um, were an, an inspiration because they love nature and gardens. The, this artist, um, and we commissioned this mural on the side of the building um, about every six months. Um, so the inspiration is that both of these birds are Ben and Hazel. So um, we feel their spirit um, coming through the whole complex and in a sense we don't want it, the building just to confine where the art goes. We like to take the art into the gardens and even on the side of the building. Great, wonderful. Yeah, so it's really wonderful and, and we'll look to other artists. We go out um, to, to see what other ideas and some fantastic um, mural artists are out in, in the area at the moment. So we look forward to what the next work might be. Yeah. Yeah. As far as events go, this, this is a very warm and welcoming kind of place. Yeah. I'm seeing kids playing, I'm seeing people doing art and things like that. Um, what are some of the activities that people can do when they well, come here? Well, there's plenty to do um, yeah. because our, our main purpose is to be a community hub. So we really look to the community of what they'll respond to. Of course, um, you've been to the regional gallery, so putting on excellent um, and the highest calibre art exhibitions is really important. 
um, because that brings great art to the Sutherland Shire. So you don't always have to go to the major institutions. Um, and the next exhibition we've got is Old Masters coming from the Art Gallery of New South Wales. So 16th century art. So we change that program very regularly. Um, and then we also have a, a Broadhurst Gallery named after Ben and Hazel, which changes over every two weeks. So there's always new work, um, contemporary artists, work by our art students. Um, people can um, do art classes. Uh, I've got, I think last count, 650 students we have every term. Wow. So we have classes yeah. in the morning, afternoon and night in everything from painting, drawing, uh, printmaking, jewellery design, uh, ceramics, um, life drawing, there's a whole myriad of, and people love to do an art class each term. Um, and kids, of course, after school and in the holidays. So it's a really thriving creative centre in that sense um, that people can to do art classes. And then, of course, we have master classes. So when we have an exhibition, the artists involved may be able to spend a day with students um, and you know share their technique or their ideas. So those classes happen. And then, of course, um, we do special events to bring it all together. We have fest days um, and at night, so we open, we have a Sunday open days where we have everything happening, tours and talks in the exhibitions. We have a film club, so we have a theaterette. So people come along to our films four times a week now. We've just increased. Um, so mainly art house or different films are screened, so people join our film club. I think there's about 600 members of that at the moment, so that's a really Gee, fun thing. Yeah. Come along, have a cup of coffee, go and see a film on a Thursday morning or an afternoon or a Sunday afternoon or Monday night. Um, so the films are regularly... So on the fest days, we have the films happening, the talks, music, and then at night is music uh, performance um, and fun art making to do for everyone. And then we have another one coming up soon is our uh, Made by Hand Art Markets. So we're going to have 90 stall holders. Wow. And they have to be designers or artists so that you know they can really share um, authentic work because I think that as an art centre we need to do that and we can support artists by giving them the opportunity to sell their work and share their work. Um, so that's really exciting coming up in October. Um, so I, and anything else we can think of. Mm. <laughs> Schools come here a lot um, and we just love people to enjoy because you know I guess at the core is um, we believe art makes a difference in people's lives. It's inspiring. It can see the world from a different point of view, it can see um, ideas that you have maybe haven't thought of and I think because it's such a friendly setting it means that people feel art's accessible and it's not something that seems elitist. So the busier we are and the more welcoming and fun I think that responds in the people coming. So last year we had a record year of 236,000 people came during that year which was huge. I think everyone <laughs> needed a rest after that but what it means is that you know, people feel this is a place that they love to come to. Um, I was going to say as well, because there are so many different spaces around this place, is there any opportunity for venue hire, things like that? Oh, yeah, there is actually. Yeah? Um, oh, great. People love to have a wedding here. I mean, this yeah. time of year, of course, it's just beautiful and the gardens are great and the cafe, uh, I didn't mention the cafe is, is an incredible um, place to sort of eat, sit outside, look at the view, and it's very family friendly. So people love to have parties here in the evening. Um, and corporates, we've got a number of corporate sponsors who also might have their general meeting in the theatre ed or they might have entertain their guests um, and uh, members here. So we've got about 10 different companies that are sponsors and they, they along with many of the others, I mean, we even have learner drive classes here. Oh, wow. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. people, people might come here and think, I've never been here before. Um, that's a great moment because then you think they're going to come back and, you know, come mm. to do an art class or a school excursion or just to come along with their family for lunch. It's, you know, we're open to all of that. But um, people like to hire the grounds um, for, for private events. It's terrific. So is it usual for councils to be so active in supporting the arts? I think a lot of um, community, you know, there's so many people in the community who love art or have participated in art somehow. So m most councils do have a regional gallery perhaps or an art centre, but none to the scale of Hazelhurst. I think Sutherland Shire Council was quite visionary in you know looking for the best in the country and, and establishing that and I think that the model that's at Hazelhurst with galleries and an art centre and a cafe and the grounds and a very active program um, is quite unique and so I think the numbers last year we had a record year of 236,000 people which would probably be one of the most popular in the country and I think it just shows the appetite people have um, for getting involved in the creative experience you know, which, whether it's personal, looking, watching, doing. Um, I think in Victoria, Bendigo has a great reputation as a regional art centre and, you know, we aspire to that um, as well. But I think we're 
pretty close. Um, and I think, you know, the council is here to support the community um, and, and really help them, you know, to be the most livable and wonderful place to be. And I think we're pretty biased in the Sutherland Shire, we think it is, and, and Hazelhurst really contributes to that. So where can people find out more about the Hazelhurst Gallery, its history and doing general classes and things like well, that? Well, if they pop by, I mean, we're in Guy Mere and 782 the Kingsway Guy Mere. So people might be driving past the Kingsway's, you know, the main thoroughfare through the Sutherland Shire. So it's, um, it's easy just to drop in and talk to us. They can call us on the phone, 85365700. Um, websites always are great. It's www.hazelhurst.com.au. Um, we're on social media actively with Facebook, um, and ENU, so, you know, we really were, and being part of the Sutherland Shire Council, you know, if people want to go through that way, um, that's also another option. So we're open seven days, we're open every day, we're only shut four days a year, Gee. and we're open every term in the evening till 10 o'clock, so, yeah. Wow. Hope, they shouldn't have too much trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Belinda, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for lending us your time. We might just go and have a walk around and oh, see what else we can find around please, here. Please, I'm sure you'll find a few surprises in the gardens, and you never know, there's a, uh, some artwork hiding amongst the trees, you never know what you'll find. Well, that's all the time we have for today at the Hazelhurst Regional Gallery and Arts Centre. Thank you so much for joining us and don't forget to check out more episodes online. We'll see you on the next one.